Welcome back to my Let's Play of Okami. Um, this episode we will be getting, well, finishing up the side quests, um, talking to a few villagers, and getting Susano to slash down a boulder for us. Well, not really, but you'll see what I mean. Anyway, digging up these turnips. Um, the, the main goal here is to, if you haven't already learned, you, you're you supposed to pretty much color in with ink. It stuns her for a second and allows you to easily dig up a turnip. Um, there's really nothing else, there's really not too much of a challenge, like that, the only challenge in this mini game really is figuring that out. <laughs> And once you do, like, unless, um, she's standing literally, like, right next to you, uh, she'll, she'll slam you in the face. But other than that, um, just don't let her get too close. And even if she has ink on, if she has ink on her and she's blinded, if you're still standing right in front of her, she'll still go for the punch. So you're not safe if you're right in front of her. Um... But yeah, uh, so I'm just luring, luring her out here now, and then blinding her out here so I can pick the last one. So then I'm just going to bite it with C and take it back to the kid as proof. He'll be like, yay, now I have something to work for, and he'll give us some praise. I don't think it's a large amount of praise, though. seven. And um, I don't know what that dog's deal is. I don't. I don't really think he does it. I think oh, uh, this treasure chest. Um, I don't know why I didn't think of it, but I bet I could wall jump up that. I'm not entirely positive though, or maybe jump off a cliff to it. I, mean, I didn't really. Uh, I kind of just ignored that chest for now, but I'll probably go back to it whenever I revisit this village. Anyway, uh, this is the next side quest, Mrs. Orange, and. She's complaining about not having a drying pool uh, so she can dry her clothes. And basically, it's real simple. You just draw in the pool like so. Um, if it gets like, if the ink gets like water colored or whatever, um, that means that you're drawing in the right place, basically. At least for filling, for, for rejuvenating things. Um, yeah, she asked for the sun next, and that's real easy. I mean, I could figure out where to paint it just by where uh, the black swirl was on the map there, right in between the trees. And there's this, my really crappy shaped oval. And... I mean, you, you know about the legend, yet you still are confused as to why these things just happen to you right after you talk to this wolf about it. Anyway, um, just, just blind. But yeah, so I save here. Yeah, you'll see I, my, my, uh, the playthrough that I screw around in is right above the one I just saved. And that is where uh, Susano, the supposed descendant of Nagi, he will be a crucial part of the story later. Well, he's an interesting character too. Well, not not really interesting. Just like I, I like him for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> he just he just makes me smile. Um, I go in here just to collect the rice, yeah. <clears throat> I think there's a few things I forgot. Like, I forgot to revisit revisit the Orange's house, I think. I don't know. Maybe I did. I'm not really sure if I revisited them or not. But if I didn't, uh, then I'll definitely uh, revisit them at night and get... Because uh, I know I can talk to the old dude 
and he'll give me like a lot of oranges. Well, actually, my astral pouch is full now. Don't necessarily even need that. But anyway, yeah, I'm just going in this house, so smashing her pots, Zelda style. Don't give a fuck about your property. And outdoor. Just exploring the village a little bit. I like exploring every house. Um, I feed these chickens. And I don't really like understand this. <laughs> like, why, why would I just want to watch the wolf just look at the chicken? Like why, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what that's about. But anyway, going into the oranges house next, after I'm done trying to break things that won't break. I think I could slash them though, but I don't really find that out until a little later on also. Um, go up, I grab the oranges. Leave the house and what? What am I supposed? What am I doing now? Oh yeah, okay. I'm probably going back up to. Um, uh, no, I'm talking to the sake maker. All right. I'm talk. I'm gonna talk to her and then I'm gonna go up and start the main uh, storyline again. So I pretty much after this I talk to everyone and really completed all the side missions that I know of anyway. She will also be a crucial part a little later on. <laughs> I like that explanation. Being a god at all. This is why you see triangles over people's heads. It's like it's a video game, you don't have to try to explain it, you know. <laughs> so I get the rice and the barrels of rice. And now that's that, I'm going to talk to, you will, you'll find out that uh, the way to the field is blocked off by huge boulders. And you'll talk to this merchant, he's obviously not having a good time, he's in vain pushing the huge rock that's obviously not going to move. And then we get jumped by um, the Impolutus. Pretty sure that's the weapon they're using is a loot. And he smacks his ass at me and the fight starts. So these guys, they're a, they're a little smarter than the green imps. A little like they they defend. They defend against your attacks with the loot after three hits. And then the third hit, that's whenever you get ready to cut the loot. And then whenever you cut the loot, it destroys their weapon and then they're basically so that's how you beat the Ludens, or whatever they're called. Um, cut him in half, and that was my first beat. Okay. That's what I was talking about earlier. Um, basically, I guess if you use a power slash on an enemy that's already dead, but like still, you can still hit him, like he still has a hitbox during that time, then if you cut him in half, then you get a beat. Um, so yeah, I get 30 praise for that, and that's enough to invest in my first step, which I go for survivability, at least in the beginning, so I decided to go with health. I mean, it was really between that and the ink bottle, so <laughs> health. So, I get that pretty easily, but it already cost 80 for the next one, so it's only going to keep getting a bit higher, obviously. That's just another RPG level up element. 
and he recommends that uh, the only way to get through is of the supposed Nagi's uh, descendant, Suzanne. Um, so now you're supposed to go talk to him, and supposedly he has the ability to smash through boulders. Well, if he was a true descendant of Nagi anyway, he would be able to smash through boulders, no problem. But you find him down in this basement, sleeping during the day, and... Yeah, just listen to his voice. Like, this is what I was talking about with Andrew Kazooie. I don't know if, like, all of their voices... I mean, I'm pretty sure it is all their voices are, like, somewhat modeled off of that. Because at least, like, Andrew Kazooie is, like, the furthest back I can remember that does, like, the mumbling, talking kind of thing in that same kind of voice. Um, this game does it too with like really every character and I think this is when it really took the cake for me where I was like you know they had to have modeled this somewhat off of Banjo-Kazooie because Susano sounds exactly like Mumbo Jumbo dude like just he, he, if you play Banjo-Kazooie you know what I'm talking about like, I wouldn't be surprised if it was, like, the same voice actor. He sounds exactly like that skull, dude. Mumbo Jumbo. And Banjo-Kazooie. And I don't think that was on accident, either. So yeah, you uh, ride him back to the merchant. Somehow he's not, he doesn't have the ability to just jump off of you. I guess he's like super glued to the wolf or something. So now he's confronted with the merchant and he asks him a favor in which his response is basically going to be to walk away. Walk away, take a snooze, and complain about not having sake. So now we go back and realize that yeah he's just he's just laying there and he's doubting his abilities and now he's pissed that he doesn't have any sake so the obvious next thing to do since we talked just recently talked to a sake brewer we go back to her and request that she makes us some sake so Back to Kushi. And another easy fix. Um, the game, like, the game's difficulty definitely escalates once you hit the feel. Like, at least a little bit you can feel it. Like, the game like tries to slowly amp the difficulty on you, I guess. 